Garrett, start things off for us, if you will. We've had multiple um, uh, uh, pleas this morning right up against the deadline. Take us through what we know so far. Yes, I mean, there's just one uh, of the 19 co-defendants who's not entered a plea thus far, a relatively minor player in this saga. One of the Coffee County elections officials uh, caught up in the broader RICO case here. Uh, Donald Trump, having filed his not guilty uh, appearance waiver last week, we knew would not be attending. And as you pointed out at the top, it's a bit of a split decision for the Trump campaign. They have raised so much money around his legal problems, and particularly around his appearances in in various courtrooms, be they in New York or even his surrender in Georgia a few weeks ago where they raised more than $7 million. Now they're trying to raise money off the fact that he's not going, pointing out that this would be televised, arguing that it's basically just a spectacle that he doesn't need to participate in, uh, even though those spectacles have benefited him thus far. I think the thing we're most looking out for, at least that I'm most looking out for, actually doesn't have to do with tomorrow's hearing at all, which sounds like it'll be a lot of perfunctory paperwork. It's the decision about the Mark Meadows next steps here. Remember. Yeah. Meadows has been arguing that his case belongs in federal court, even though he's already pled not guilty uh, via waiver just this morning. That decision from the judge about whether his case will move to federal court remains outstanding. To me, that's the most interesting next shoe to drop in this particular saga. Garrett, I'm so happy you brought that up. Um, Jackie, if you will, weigh in on that um, for us, and especially how you see Rudy Giuliani there. You see his mugshot, right? Um, second from the former president how he's watching how this plays out with Mark Meadows as to whether or not he can actually move this thing to a federal court. Yeah, we've been waiting for Trump's lawyers to actually follow Meadows' suit uh, and file to have these charges um, tried uh, federally. But his lawyers have yet to do that. And as Garrett noted, it's likely because they're waiting to see how things uh, shake out. But we saw Meadows appear before um, the judge last week in, in trying to make this argument that he was acting in his capacity at, as a federal official, his, as a gatekeeper for the former president, and seeking to depict his involvement as part of his duties as Trump's top top aide in, in the White House and a senior advisor. Um, his attorneys have obviously argued that uh, this should qualify the case for federal removal. And then in that situation, uh, he would then be more likely to potentially dismiss those charges uh, if, it, if the case did ultimately get moved. Um, but you know, it's a little bit uh, of a, a long shot case here. There are many people on the ground, particularly in Georgia, who have said uh, that Meadows very clearly was not acting in his capacity as a, fe as a federal official because he didn't have the rights constitutionally to begin with to intervene in a state election uh, when he was part of the efforts that, that Trump was taking to overturn the results of the election, like pressuring officials uh, like Francis Watts and, and, and the former former secretary of the, and the secretary of state at the time to try to identify uh, these unsubstantiated claims of, of voter fraud. Um, but it is interesting that, that Trump's lawyers have yet to actually um, go ahead and, and file this motion for federal removal. And it's likely because there are a host of others um, who are also in line to do this, and they're waiting again to see um, how which way the, the judge ultimately falls on this. So, so Joyce, um, this is a twofer um, on this specific question, which is, does his argument qualify for moving to a federal court um, in your purview? And at what point do you expect to get a decision on this from the judge? So Judge Jones' decision will turn on whether Mark Meadows was working for candidate Trump or President Trump when he acted in Georgia. And if he can't establish that he was working for the then president, his odds of removing this case become slim to none. But the judge is aware that this is an unprecedented sort of an issue. It will be a precedent-setting decision at least for this case, I think he'll take his time to get it right, knowing that regardless of who wins and who loses here, it's likely to, to land in the 11th Circuit. There's a lot of law coming out of this circuit, including a Supreme Court case involving two Birmingham judges who tried to remove a civil case from state court to federal court. The analysis is indistinguishable between federal uh, criminal cases and, and federal uh, civil cases in this regard. 
And so the judge has his work cut out for him to get it right. All that to say, I don't expect to see an opinion today. How, how massive of an undertaking, Joyce, does Fonnie Willis have here when you have 18 co-defendants all trying to sever their cases from one another, a former president of the United States trying to push the can down the road when it comes to his own trial date, right? You have a former chief of staff to that president trying to get his move to a federal court. Talk about the undertaking DA Fonnie Willis has and how realistic it is that Trump could actually see a trial date before the 24 election. So it's a big case with a lot of moving parts. But you know, Yasmin, that's the job. That's what Fonnie Willis does for a living day in and day out. And it's worth noting that this morning, Georgia's attorney general indicted a RICO case with 61 defendants. So what she's doing here is large in scope. It's complicated because it involves a former president. It's important because it involves election interference in 2020, but it's not really outside of her wheelhouse. And I think that's been difficult to explain that this is what the voters in Fulton County, Georgia, elected her to do in cases that involve violent crime and politics and public corruption and, and all sorts of fraud. And it's what she does.